Adafruit GFX provides a common way to draw text or shapes on different display types. But in this video, I want to focus on the two times I used it in a way it probably isn't intended to be used to make my life easier. First up, we need to understand the basics of how to use Adafruit GFX before we can start using it in weird ways. A lot of different display libraries make use of Adafruit GFX. Obviously, all the Adafruit ones do, but other libraries do too, such as PX Matrix and the I2S Matrix library. It provides methods for drawing shapes such as rectangles and circles, and also provides methods for drawing text, so it is a really quick way of adding these features to your display library. Bitlooney integrated it into his graphics library, and I was asking him how much work it was, and he sent me a link to the code. It was basically only one method. Adafruit GFX only requires a single method to be implemented, a draw pixel method. Given coordinates and a color, this method will draw a single pixel to the display. Adafruit GFX will call this method as many times as it needs to to draw whatever you want to display. For example, when you write text, it figures out what pixels need to be set and calls your method to do it. You can overwrite more than just draw a pixel, but that is the minimum you need to do. Great, but who says that draw pixel has to write directly to a display? We can do whatever we want when it's called. So the first example of a bodgy solution I built with Adafruit GFX is one for a falling sand project I built for Maker Faire Hanover last year. It was built using a 64 by 64 RGB LED matrix, an ESP32, and a GY521 accelerometer module. The project is based on a project from an Adafruit Learn Guide, I took their example code and ported it to use the larger matrix display and also use the GY521 accelerometer. My implementation of the project was really basic when I was leaving for Maker Fair, but a group of us worked on it together while we were there and we decided it would be pretty cool to have permanent objects the sand could collide with. The Adafruit code kept an array that represented all the spaces on the screen to keep track of which spaces were occupied by sand, as sand could only move into empty spaces. We figured that if we populated this array with a shape, then the grains of sand would not be able to occupy this space, so it would be an object to collide with. Inserting something simple like a square into the array would have been pretty straightforward, but we wanted to make doing something more complicated easy on ourselves. Remembering how simple it was for Bitlooney to implement Adafruit GFX into his library, I decided to try use it to populate this array. I created a class that inherited from Adafruit GFX, and I provided an implementation for draw pixel, except it didn't draw anything. It just updated the relevant positions in the array as occupied. All we had to do then was initialize this new class, and then we could use any Adafruit GFX method to populate the array. This did not draw anything on the matrix, so we separately needed to call the matrix library to draw the same thing we did on the array. Is this an optimized solution? Probably not, but if it was, it wouldn't be much of a budge. The next project is a problem I've been meaning to look at for a while, but I just never thought of an easy way of doing it. These RGB LED matrices can be chained together, but the libraries treat them as being connected horizontally, or in other words, one giant widescreen. If you wanted to arrange them differently, you would need to manually map what you wanted to draw to the way the library sees them. This isn't too bad if what you want to draw is completely contained on a single panel, you just need to figure out where the starting coordinates are. But what if you wanted to draw something that spanned multiple panels? Emily Velasco had this problem recently when she was playing around with multiple pixel purse matrix panels. She wanted to arrange them vertically. I thought it might be possible to create almost like a virtual display, which has the same resolution as how you want to lay out your panels. You would be able to draw to this virtual display and it would worry about mapping the pixels back to the matrix panels. Again, to achieve this, I created a new class that inherited from Adafruit GFX. This time I had some more functions to implement. 
The I2S matrix library that I'm using for the ESP32 I2S matrix shield has implemented more than just draw pixel and I wanted this new virtual display class to be a complete substitute for the matrix panel in code so I implemented all the same ones it did. Most of the methods just convert the coordinates provided to what the matrix library expects and then calls the equivalent method of the matrix library. Since our virtual display inherits from Adafruit GFX, we can now draw shapes or text anywhere on the screen and it will be correctly mapped to the panels. Just an update on this since I started recording this video, the author of the library has actually included it in the library now. So if you look at the chained panels example on the latest GitHub version, he has documentation around how to wire it up and different configurations you can use with it. He has also provided some images of it working. I believe this is the image of the demo sketch that he provides. But he also demonstrated that it's not just for text and shapes that you can use it with anything. So this is the animated GIF library that Larry or Mr. Optimization from my Discord wrote. And you can see here it is working across four panels. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful as a treat for watching till the end. Here's a picture of my lack of hair. It sounds like I'm being called out there, so it's time to come to an end. But uh, a huge thanks to my GitHub sponsors for helping support the channel. I do really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all next time. Bye bye.